Apple Arcade. The service that some people hate and some people absolutely despise. Mainly because this service is stuck on platforms that gamers just don't use. So when Sonic fans found out that Dream Team was not coming to, you know, actual gaming platforms that gamers use, they were furious. Well, fear not, my hedgehogs and people are, who are dying to play Sneaky Sasquatch. There is a solution to run these games on a non-Apple hardware. And actually, this solution existed for a while, ever since Apple Arcade has existed, really. Hackintosh. Okay, what the hell is a Hackintosh, Bracker? Is this a device I have to spend money on? Because, you know, at that point, I would have to get a job. I could just hop on and use Market and buy some old Apple TV or iPad or iPhone that just works with Apple Arcade and use that instead, you know? Well, not really. Hackintosh is when you hack Mac OS meant for Intel Macs to run normal PC hardware, be it a laptop or PC or even a damn supercomputer. Since Apple Arcade games do come out for Mac OS, we can just use that to run Apple Arcade games on our PC. Seems pretty simple, right? But how do we get started? Well, glad you asked. Using the guide I'll link in the description, you can set up Mac OS install on your PC. It's only 10,000 pages long, and hey, why are you closing this video? Okay, there is a simpler way. There is a script called OpenCore Simplify, which basically scans your hardware, tell what pieces of hardware in your PC are compatible with macOS or not, and builds a pre-configured folder for you. And this folder will basically fool macOS to think that your PC is a real Mac. Then, using this guide, you just create a macOS USB installer. I actually tried this script and uh, it actually worked pretty well. The only complaint I have is uh, sleep mode seems to be pretty broken. And this script may not work for you. Like, uh, some person just DM'd me and said that it just didn't work for him. The Mac was, was kernel panicking. So, <laughs> you know, uh, if it's not gonna work, you will need to have to use the guide whenever you like it or not. Also, a thing to note is that some hardware just simply may not be compatible with Mac OS, and in that case, uh, I would just recommend buying some cheap used iPad or something. Oh, Pracker, that's great and all, but can I just install Mac OS on Virtual Machine and use that to play Apple Arcade games on there? Well, yeah, kinda, but the Virtual Machine in question should have a compatible graphics card passed through that VM so it could, you know, actually render games. It's not gonna be as simple as just installing Mac OS on VM and that's it. You need a working GPU on there. And obviously you cannot use OpenCore Simplify with a VM setup, so you will need to follow a specific Mac OS VM guide for, you know, setting this whole stuff up. Either way, if you're gonna use a VM or gonna run it on a real hardware, you just gotta make sure that graphics card that you're gonna use is gonna be compatible with Mac OS 10.15 or above. Now, why is that? Well, uh, this is the version that started supporting Apple Arcade, but more importantly is that graphics card that supported 10.15 or above support Metal API, which is basically Apple's version of DirectX or OpenGL or Vulkan. And literally every Apple Arcade game uses it. So if you somehow use some third-party patches to run unsupported GPU on modern Mac OS, which by the way exists, it, it will work, but it will not run these games at all. So yeah, make sure that your GPU works with 10.15 or above to save yourself from disappointment. In my case, the compatible PC turned out to be my old laptop that I don't really use much nowadays. And I gotta say, Mac OS runs pretty well on it. It kind of works like a real Mac. I mean, its build quality and screen is absolutely atrocious, but I can do most back things on it now, so 
I guess is pretty cool, and one of those things is obviously playing Apple Arcades. Despite having only integrated Intel HD 520, a lot of games actually run pretty well, so let's check some of them out. Well, let's kick things off with Angry Birds Bounce. Unfortunately, this game doesn't seem to have graphical settings menu, and judging from how pixelated 3D models look and lack of interactive animations on top left, it's safe to say that the game is defaulted to its lowest resolution possible because Intel Poop graphics kinda sucks. But in terms of uh, FPS and gameplay, we're getting stable 60 FPS with drops to 40 FPS, or sometimes 30 if a lot of stuff is happening on screen. So for this game, it's pretty playable. You can try lowering resolution to get more frame rate if you really need to, though. Next up is Crossy Road Castle, and this game doesn't run at 60 FPS. It's more like 45 on average, and don't get me wrong, 45 is playable, but 60 FPS on this game feels amazing. Thankfully, lowering resolution in the settings does help the poor Intel Poop graphics uh, to run it at a stable-ish 60 FPS with some tiny drops to like 55, which is fine. Rayman Mini. Uh, for the most part, it runs at 60 FPS, but there are some rare instances where this game frame rate is chugging. But hey, if you want to play Dive version of Rayman Legends and you're stuck with my setup or close to it, then you'll enjoy without any issues. Cuffer Rope Remastered and Cuffer Rope Pre can't exactly hit 60 FPS mark. It usually runs at like 50 FPS with lows being 30. For this game, it isn't big deal at all. Uh, I generally thought it was like 60 FPS until I look at a frame rate counter. <laughs> Subway Surface Tag runs at stable 50 FPS until a bunch of robots spawn in and make frame rate go as low as 30. Granted, lowering resolution does improve gaming performance if you don't mind playing in 720p.
Now this is the game that more people are interested in playing. Katamari Rolling Life. And this game gives me some wild numbers. In tutorial stage, I was getting 999 FPS. And when we go to the actual world to roll everything up, then it averages at 100 to 200 FPS. I think it's safe to say that you're gonna have a blast with this game. And obviously, saving best for the last, Sonic Dream Team. This game, at any setting, runs pretty much above 60 FPS, but once I go to the ultra settings, then this game does dip to like 30 FPS and sometimes below 30 FPS. So overall, if you stick to the correct settings, you can play Sonic Dream Team with no issues on a low-end hardware, as long as it's compatible with Mac OS, of course. So yeah, this is essentially how you can run Apple Arcade games on PC. Let me know your thoughts about this method of running Apple Arcade games on PC. And this was Pracker, and I see you all in the next video. Oh, also join my Discord server, jo jo join my Discord, 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 go, go, go!